Welcome back to Mastering Kinemaster. Today we're gonna to work on a stinger transition. So what's a stinger transition, you asked? Well, you just saw one. It is that fast-moving, logo-based, extremely popular transition to keep your audience engaged and quickly cut from scene to scene while showing your brand. So if you're interested in a stinger transition of your own in Kinemaster, like and subscribe. Join me on either side to learn how to do this cool technique and walk away with a stinger transition of your own. To see how this works, let's take a look at that intro you just watched. You'll notice that all of the clips on the bottom layer are not using KineMaster built-in transitions. The transitions are actually the little chroma key stingers that are sitting on top, that little green box. Now we're gonna make a stinger in a minute, but I wanna show you what the important features of it are. So this one I left the chroma key on. You'll note that there is a lot of green at the beginning where it's zooming, rushing in. And then this is the important part is the animation hits one or two frames where the animation completely takes over the screen. That is where the transition occurs on the backside and then it animates down very quickly and you're already into the next clip. Let's go ahead and turn on the chroma key and you can see it the way that it happens with the chroma key knocked out. And one really nice thing about this is because we're not using a KineMaster transition, we don't have to worry about audio. No J cuts, no L cuts, no separating audio out because the audio of this one ends here and the audio of this one starts here and you can just cut them perfectly together. Now let's go ahead and see how we create these stingers in another movie. Let's go ahead and create our stinger. I've got a new project. I drop in a solid color and I change that to green by hitting the color slider and upping it to 100% green. Then I take it and I lower the duration to less than one. Anything around 0.8 is pretty good. And then I go back and I'm going to add my audio SFX, which I'm using this boxing bell. KineMaster has a lot of SFX in the KineMaster store. Now we're ready to move forward and animate our logo. The first thing I'm doing is stretching the timeline for a little bit more room to work with, then scroll to the beginning, open up a new layer, and add my logo, which I'm using my blog logo this time because it works very well because it will scale up to 100% very easily. So let's bring it back down there. Then the next thing that you do is you want to go to the end of where the green is and then go to your logo and trim to the right because you want it just to end when the green ends. Now we're going to go ahead and add our keyframes. So if you remember with keyframes and we select our logo, we click on the little key over there. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that the beginning and the end start and end at the same place. So I add a keyframe at the end before I do any maneuvering of anything. And now when I scroll back roughly to the middle, it doesn't have to be perfect or precise or anything like that. Then we want to create the frame where we have our full 100% takeover of the content. So now we have the most basic version of it complete, and this would actually work. We could just go up and go back down. I'm going to show you something really quickly. It's very, very easy to do with keyframes. Get back into the keyframe menu, and you can give a little activity because every time that you move your logo at this point, because you have your three points placed, is move it over a little to the side, scroll this timeline forward, move it a little to the side more, and scroll a little bit like this. And this gives it a little shaky activity basically it makes it a little bit more kind of exciting some other ideas is that it could be horizontal it doesn't have to it could scroll in from the side it's really only that at the very uh, and so check this out is that how, now the animation is a little bit more of an interesting animation um, you can do lots of animations just make sure in the beginning there's not very much seen and in the middle that it's a hundred percent seen now we're gonna go ahead and we go to our export menu and remember when you're exporting to bring things back in I always export on the highest level I'm going to get rid of the old one and I'm going to export another one and we are ready to bring that into our main movie Back in the main movie really quick, showing you this stinger that starts and goes horizontally across and stops in the middle as I was talking about a different animation style. And just to show, I'm going to delete this and I'm going to add the one we just made, go in to the layer, go into the media, and we've got our whole folder of stingers that we can reuse. Add this one here. When they first get dropped in, they're a layer, so they need to be resized. We go ahead and I select it, and then we go ahead and enable the chroma key on it. And the last thing that you want to do is want to make sure that the spot where it's 100% full is basically where the transition occurs between the two frames. And there we go. It is 
working for us in that way right there. I just want to notice as well is that this underlying video, really most of it was just me cutting a video that I did into different sections and then recoloring them or zooming them or changing a filter on them or zooming closer in and again. And that is just a way to add change and excitement with a stinger in between and it makes that style that people seem to really like, I think is really cool, fast paced. I hope you like it too. And I hope that you make some stingers and make some fun. All right, hopefully that makes all the sense that you need to get your own stinger transition going. Remember, like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. And now it's your turn to get out there, make something really cool, do a cool stinger, come back and tell me about it, leave it in the comments, ideas, thoughts, and suggestions. I'm always interested in what you have to say, and I will see you the next time.